Hello there. Today I want to tell you a little bit about old British telephones. Basically the 700 series phones which are like these and were issued from the late 1950s right up until the 1980s by uh, the General Post Office which later became British Telecom and then later of course became BT as it is today. There are a lot of uh, reproductions of these phones around there are also a lot that have been messed with i want to show you what is original and basically what isn't so that you can get a genuine old telephone if that is what you want basically the telephones came in two types the 700 series or, or at least the desk phones did there were wall mounted versions which I'm not going to cover in this particular video. But there were two desk versions, and then there were other sub-versions of these as well that had uh, all kinds of extra buttons and things on them for doing all, all kinds of things like, um, like for instance, uh, a secretary's telephone and where you could have one and secretary's desk and one and the boss's desk and intercoms between them and things like that. But they were very specialised. Normally, the normal designs of modern telephone that you would have had in a normal house, let's say, would have been like this. There would have been 706, which came first. This was developed in the late 1950s. And then in the late 60s, taking over from the 706 was a 746, like this one here. There are various ways to tell the difference between the two, but the foolproof way of telling if you've got a 746 or a 706 is by looking at the casing and looking at the top of the case here. If it goes to little horns like that, it's a later 746. So it will be at the earliest around about 1968, I think the very first prototypes came out. If it's more rounded, up there if you can see that it's a bit difficult to see because this is black but if it's got rounded lumps there then it's a 706 also the press button on the top if it's got one if it's just got a blanking plate which some of them have is not quite as thin on the 706 it's it's deeper from back to front Look at the 746, the later one, it's a longer, thinner button or blanking plate. The 706 dial, as built, was like this one. The numbers, you'll notice, are not on the dial plate behind the finger wheel. They are on the dial bezel, and there are letters on the dial bezel as well. That is as the 706 was built. The 746, by the time we got to the 746 in the late 60s, there was no need for letters on the dials anymore because of the way you dial numbers in the UK. And so we just had the numbers and by this time they moved on to the uh, dial back plate and the finger wheel by now was clear rather than being coloured to match the phone as it is on this one. You'll see this one's not clear. If I rotate it, you'll see it is actually black plastic. Basically, it was a cost-saving thing. Whatever colour your phone was, if it had a clear finger wheel, um, you just had to make clear finger wheels instead of making all the different coloured ones that they did for the 706. So, your 706 basically should have a coloured finger wheel to match the telephone and a alphanumeric dial bezel and that would make it a 706L for lettered, L standing for lettered. If it was to only have numbers it would be a 706F for figure which um, I'm not sure that, any, that there were any built like that as uh, as standard phones. Now you might find some 706s that have got the later dial on. This is generally because they've been back to the factory and they've been 
modernised and then sent out again. You didn't buy phones, you rented them from uh, the GPO and from British Telecom. So if you stopped renting a phone for any reason, or if you upgraded, the old one went back to the factory and was often reused. You know, parts of it were updated if necessary and sent back out to another subscriber. So sometimes you do get 706s with the later 746 style dial. I'm not sure if any of the very late on 706s were built with the 746 style dial, but most of them were built like that. So that is what you are looking for, the coloured finger wheel and the alphanumeric bezel. Also, except for grey and green versions, there were never any two-tone phones made for uh, the GPO. They were always a single colour. You get a lot these days popping up on auction sites and things that are multicoloured. The handset will be a different colour to the body of the phone or the dial bezel here will be a different colour. Uh, these multicoloured phones or two-tone phones and that, unless they are green or grey versions and the grey turns brownish with age, unless they are green or grey versions, two-tone green or two-tone grey, unless they are that, they are not as built. They've had parts changed to make them different colours. There have in recent years been companies around that have been remanufacturing the cases for these phones, sometimes in completely different colours that were never actually issued, and then fitting new cases. So if you see a phone with something like a purple case or a bright orange case, that is not a genuine one. That's one that's had the case replaced. And if you see one that is two-tone, again, either the case has been replaced on most of those, or if it's not been replaced, it's had bits from one phone swapped with bits from another phone. For instance, a red and ivory phone or an ivory and red phone have had bits swapped around between the two. The only ones that were two-tone were two-tone grey and two-tone green. So two-tone grey is similar to this phone here, where you see the, the handset is a d darker colour and the dial bezel is a darker colour. But this is not a phone that was issued by the GPO. And you can tell this because it is, well, it looks like a 706 type because of this rounded thing here so it looks like a 706 but look at the dial bezel it's only got numbers it has not got letters and also if you look at the the arrows in the finger wheel there they're silver and they're kind of three-dimensional looking not just a flat printed design like on a 706. Now this and this, which is similar, but a black version. These are phones that were made by various companies, normally the same companies that made the 700 series phones, but they were made for private telephone networks, often big office blocks or big factories. So they weren't generally coupled directly to the public service telephone network but would have been used on an office or factory system somewhere. They are often made by Ericsson um, but other companies did also make them but they are not normal public service telephones and would not normally have been coupled up to the network. And as I say, the easiest way of distinguishing them is by looking at the dial bezel here. The other way to tell is a BT phone or a GPO phone or whatever you want to call it will have its number underneath. 706L in the case of this one. The SER65 slash 2A. Basically that means the SER is the uh, manufacturer code for whatever company actually made this phone for uh, the GPO. The 65 is the date and the 2A means this is a 706 type 2A. There were three versions of the 706, the Mark 1, the Mark 2 and the Mark 2A. 
But if we look underneath this 746, although I've got it upside down, it's 746F for figure. SPK is the code and it's 741, so made in 1974. And the F, of course, means it's a figure dial as opposed to the L, a lettered dial. So if this was a 706, it would be a 706F because it's got figures and not letters. But it's not. It is a private system phone. And you can tell that because underneath you will either find something like this. S507683 on this particular type. Or on this one here. You will find a number beginning with an N1900. And it's the N1900 that gives it away. And that is an Ericsson phone. Now, some N1900s did look like that. Some of them had this metal dial, this uh, kind of stainless steel or chromed dial. This particular one doesn't happen to have it. It's got the plastic dial. Whether that is a replacement or not, or whether it was built like that, I'm not sure. But those two, because they've not, because they are basically 706 cases, but don't have the alphanumeric dial bezel that pretty much gives it away that they are not phones that were built for the public service telephone network. But it doesn't mean you can't use them. It means that they were just not built for it originally. So basically for a real one, look for 746 or 706 on the base of the phone. Right. I'll be back to show you inside these phones with the next video. Until then, bye for now. Hello there. In this video, I will be showing you a little bit more about old British telephones, the 700 series phones, and what they're like on the inside. Now, I'm going to forget about the later phones, the 746, in this video, because there's quite a lot to go over on the 706. So, I'll not deal with the 746 just yet. But this is a 706 with the top taken off, using the two screws mounted in the top of the case. There and there, you just undo those. Well, you don't undo them all the way. You don't actually pull them out because they are retained screws. Um, but uh, you just undo them a few turns until the case is loose and then just lift the case off. And as you can see, these are the internal workings. Now I'm going to turn the phone around because you normally work on these phones from the back unless you're doing anything else to the dial. So I'm going to turn it around and show you all these connections in here. Now, when we refer to the terminals on a telephone, we normally refer to something like make a connection to T5 or something like that, we will say to you. And basically that refers to these terminals in here. And they are all numbered. They're usually numbered on the circuit board. But just in case they're not, they go from T1 there normally to T9 at that end, and then on the second row, T10 to T19 at that end. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So if somebody says to you, oh, make a connection to ter from terminal T1 or something like that, you now know what to do. And you will notice that some of the connections are bridged together with little pieces of metal. Now, when you're converting telephones for modern operation, you have to alter some of the connections inside the phone. And there are various reasons for that. But one of the reasons is because British telephones used to have one of these on them. Now... Anybody 
who um, was around in the sort of 1970s or maybe even very early 80s, will remember that the man from uh, Telecom or the man from the GPO or whatever used to come out, if you're having your telephone installed, he would um, basically get the wire, the drop cable from uh, the... Uh, telephone pole outside run it down the outside of your house normally put it through a hole in the wall somewhere and then he would connect it into the end of one of these little blocks and then the other end of the block goes through the wire and into your telephone in this case that's 046 there now in here there are connections and some of the connections are occasionally bridged or would normally have been bridged together. So I'm just going to take the top off this one and see what's happening inside here. If I can do it one-handed. And if you can see inside there, none of those... Oh yeah, there is a bridge in there. Can you see that from there to there, that piece of metal there? So effectively, those two, the white and the green in that, are connected together. Yeah? Because obviously the line coming in from the outside world on that side is missing. It's been disconnected. Okay, well, they are bridged together. Now... It's this bridging together that causes a bit of confusion sometimes because on a modern phone line that we use now where we have the BT plugs on the end like this one of course we don't have these little boxes anymore because a phone's plugged straight into the wall. So there's no potential to do that little bridging piece with this. So we have to do the bridging. Any bridging that needs to be done has to be done inside the phone instead. So that is just one of the reasons why we alter the wiring around inside the phone. And if you want to know how to rewire various phones for the modern BT plug system, then we'll cover that, I think, in another video. Right back to what we've got here back to um basically the 706 and the private telephones the the ericsson n1900 and uh, other versions that are private telephones which are these two a 706 the big difference between the 706 and the 746 when you open it up is this thing here which I can unplug for you. Basically, what this does is it cuts down on the sensitivity of the phone. If your phone was um, close to an exchange, the exchange would be sending out x volts to your phone your signal would be x number of volts if you were close to an exchange then there would be less voltage drop between the exchange and your phone so the signal would be stronger if you're a long way from an exchange the signal would be weaker now this regulator basically what it does is when you put it into the phone it acts kind of like a resistor and it cuts down the strength of the signal. So it makes what you hear through your handset quieter. So the people on the other end don't deafen you. This is if you're close to an exchange. And also it works the other way as around. You don't deafen the people at the other end. Um, because you're close to the exchange, your voice will be very loud to the people at the other end because you're on what they call a short loop. 
So this would be inserted with the working end of it down like that if you're close to the exchange and it would basically limit the signal it would it would it would act like a like a resistor and your signal would not go through the line as strong and the signal that you receive would be cut down as well now if you were a long way from the exchange and you needed every every volt you could because people sounded quiet what you would do is take this out and put it in the other way around and you'll see the terminals at the other end aren't actually connected to anything they're just all bridged together so you would put it in the other way around like that and then you would get the full signal through so if you've got a 706 and people on it are a bit quiet or people at the other end say you're a bit quiet and they can't hear you make sure you put it in that way around with the regulator out of use don't put it in that way because if you put it in that way around then it will limit the signal so if everything's too loud that way around it needs to go if people aren't loud enough that way around and that is basically the regulator in a 706. Now in a 746, the regulator is built in, so that card isn't there. It's also worth saying at this point that in a 706, there are three different types. A 706 Mark 1, Mark 2, and Mark 2A. The Mark 1 has a plastic base. This black base is made of plastic and the wiring is traditional wiring there's lots more wires inside it going to all these terminals because all the components are wired in the traditional way with actual wires and solder the mark ii and mark ii a and this one is a mark ii a had a metal base and a printed circuit board which most of the components inside the phone are wired directly to the printed circuit board so you'll see there's not actually a great deal of wires there's just these incoming ones but then they go to the terminals and there's no other wires to the components in the phone because it's all in the printed circuit board on the mark ii and mark ii a now we will move on in the next installment and we will start talking about the private phones that you can get because they are slightly different Okay, we've already looked at the 706 phone with the top off, including the regulator and what to do with it. But uh, these two here, although they initially look very similar, are actually the private phones. The, the ones that companies built for connection to networks that were not the... Uh, GPO or telecom network that were used for private systems or were used as private extensions for companies that maybe had their own uh, exchanges and stuff like that. Now, the most obviously different one is this particular one. Now, this was the grey one that had the S number underneath it. There's the case of it. But this is the most obvious different one because the regulator is not present. There's not even a slot for it in the board there. But there are a few resistors and things in there. But no slot for the regulator. So this is basically a different circuit board. But this is the one with the S number underneath it. S507683. And to actually wire this one up for use on the modern day network, you do it exactly the same way as you would do for an ordinary 706. And this one has been wired actually for the uh, modern day network. 
This one, however, is a slightly different thing. This is the Ericsson 1900. And this you would wire slightly differently because the cables on the terminals are not on exactly the same terminals that they would be in a standard 706. Although it looks very similar and you think it's got a regulator as well that's the same. But look closely at it and you'll see this regulator is held on the side here. It's not plugged into the bottom. And if you look very carefully in there, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is the slot for the uh, regulator with nothing in it. You can see it down there, the slot, with absolutely nothing at all in it. And that is basically because, as I say, it's not a 706 phone and they did the they did the innards of them differently. Some people say it was to save money or for whatever reason they just did the innards differently. It's also interesting to note this one is a wired phone. This, If this was a 706 it would be a 706 Mark 1 because it's got the plastic base and all the components are actually wired. Not on a circuit board like this 706 Mark 2A or this private phone which is also on a circuit board. So this is the oddity. This is the N1900 and if you watch a video for how to wire a 706 to work on the modern day exchangers with the modern BT plug it doesn't quite work for the N1900. You need to change things slightly for the N1900 and I will cover that in another video. So they, that is the differences between the phones. That is your standard 706. That's, this is your Ericsson N1900. And this is the other private phone. I'm not quite sure what manufacturer this, uh, this one was for. But interestingly, they used parts in this that were meant for uh, the BT phones or the GPO phones because you'll see this big capacitor here is actually marked GPO as the one is actually in the 706 here. You see? It's marked GPO. And in the Ericsson 1900, the capacitors are in a completely different place. It's over there. You can see the differences there. So that is basically the differences. So watch out if you have one that's got N1900 marked on the base. Um, because if it is, it's a very different animal inside, as you can see from that, to uh, the normal 706 even though it looks similar it's actually not 